If you're someone who finds small creatures saying Oopa, Oopa, Oopa over and over again really irritating, this probably isn't the Pokemon episode for you. We begin today's episode with this direct quote from the narrator. As our friends continue their journey to Goldenrod City and the next Johto League gym, something interesting is about to catch their attention. It's not hard, is it? Like seriously, these characters could be on their way to visit a dying loved one and they'd still take a four hour detour just because one of them thought they heard a windmill in the distance. All right, what the hell did I just see? Did that whooper just climb a tree? Quickly at that, how on earth did it do that? It doesn't have any arms, how can it climb trees? And don't even get me started on no ice punch bollocks. The whooper lands on the back of Brock's neck and in a panic, he slips down the cliff on his ass. You know what, after sliding 50 feet down a rocky cliff grazing your ass to all hell, I'll bet a cold wet whooper on the back of your neck probably doesn't seem so bad. Direct quote from Ash Ketchum on the title card. No big whoop. Sorry mate, but I think you'll find in this context it would actually be pronounced no big whoop. Brock sees the whooper's owner and instantly falls for her, seemingly forgetting that he probably has no skin left on his backside. Mate, it'd take more than a fit bird to make me forget about that. I'd be whinging about it for weeks. Here's a direct quote from Brock. I think our meeting was destined to happen, and your Wooper was the Cupid that brought us together. Wait, so if Wooper was the Cupid, then wouldn't that be Wooped? He follows up with this. Don't you feel that way too, Alicia? Wait, she didn't tell you her name. Has Brock already stalked this woman for a while or something? Answers on a postcard. Direct quote from Misty. Come on, Brock. Let's not let Cupid make you stupid. Misty, mate, I literally just pointed this out. Wooped made him stupid, not Cupid. And let's complete the trifecta with this direct quote from Ash. Sorry, Brock can get a little weird sometimes. I'm falling off a cliff doesn't help. That's not true. I'm pretty sure if he fell off a tall enough cliff, that'd be problem solved. <laughs> Alicia explains that she runs a preschool just for Wooper, and it's all very standard Pokemon world nonsense that no one really cares about. But then I saw this. Look at it, the little heart marking on the middle Wooper. Question, why is that not the gender variant for Wooper? That'd be perfect. Oh sure, Pokemon, you'll bung a little lippy on a Wobbuffet and call it a gender variant, but you won't give Wooper Wooper a cute little heart marking. After checking his Pokedex, Ash learns that Wooper evolves into Quagsire, and then we see this flashback. And honestly, I forget that episode ever existed. Like I actually had to sit for a few minutes and wonder when this actually happened. Also, I've got no idea what that is in Quagsire's mouth. It's some kind of Pokeball variant that nobody ever seems to talk about. Alicia says she can't explain it, but the Wooper just give her a good feeling. That kind of sounds like the relationship your mum has with a rampant rabbit. Misty says she'd love to see how Alicia teaches the Wooper, and Alicia says she'll show her right away, and then immediately says, All right, class, it's time for our recess. Wait, what happened to showing Misty how you teach the Wooper? Bit of a dick move to make an offer like that and then immediately call for recess. As the Wooper all start repeating, Oopa, Oopa. Ash says it's almost like they're singing. Mate, have you heard them? They are literally chanting rhythmically to the beat of a tambourine. That is a form of singing. So if you think it's almost like they're singing, it's because they are. Whilst Ash and Misty gush over how cute the Wooper are, Brock ogles Alicia while her back is turned. Now, of course, this in itself isn't a WTF moment because it's standard Brock behavior, but you've really got to wonder, does the Pokemon world just not have porn mags? Like, Brock wouldn't feel the need to do shit like this if they'd just give him a dirty magazine to entertain himself with out of sight somewhere. Kind of like when parents hand their kids the iPad to shut them up for a bit. Wobbuffet pops out of its Pokeball for the first time. You know, for those that care. We find out that Alicia's mum is unwell. Apparently she recently broke her leg falling down the stairs. I've fallen and I can't get up. Anyway, Alicia's worried because she can't just leave the whooper and go and check on her mum. Mate, am I misunderstanding how preschools work? Because where I'm from, preschool is a place you drop your kids off in the morning, you go to work, and then you pick your kids up again after work. So won't the owners of these whooper be coming to collect them in a few hours? Just go and check on your mum then. Or failing that, could you not just put the whooper back in their pokeballs and stick them in a cupboard for an hour or something? Ash and co volunteer to look after the whooper while Alicia goes to check on her mum and she accepts their help.
Well, actually, Liam, wait, is that really the whole WTF moment? Come on, mate, use your noodle. She's so concerned about looking after the whooper and not being able to leave them on their own, and then immediately after talking about that, she's happy to leave them in the care of some strangers she just met? Who even does that? For all she knows, Ash and friends could be Pokemon thieves trying to trick her into leaving the whooper with them so they're easier to steal. This Alicia girl is really irresponsible. Pass it on. Mate, she's got a bloody moped. She could easily whiz to her mum's and back in like an hour on that thing, surely. Plus, don't those things have like a storage bit under the arse bit? Just put the whooper in the Pokeballs and stick them in there. Wait, did I really refer to the part of the moped you sit on as the arse bit? Did I really forget the word seat? Oh, there's no hope for me, is there? When Misty asks if it's going to be hard looking after the Whooper, Brock says, It's going to be a piece of cake. I shouldn't have to remind you, Misty, that I'm an extremely experienced Pokemon breeder. Oh yeah? How many Pokemon have you bred? The gang realise the Whooper have all gone missing, and of course Brock turns to stone and falls to the floor. Misty then tells him it's not going to help to lie there like a statue. Lie there like a statue? Is that a thing? Lying statues? I don't think I've ever seen a lion statue. Oh wait, there's one. <laughs> It looks like the Whooper have left a trail of piss. Just goes to show you, incontinence can happen to anybody. Ash and friends find the Whooper ransacking the place and eating all the food they can find. Brock then decides his super delicious, super nutritious, incredible edible Pokemon food pellets will save the day. Brock mate, the Whooper have already found food, so why would they want your potsy pellets? Also, needing to add the word edible to your food's name doesn't exactly fill anybody with confidence about the quality of the product, does it? Instead of any of them eating the pellet or the whooper simply engulf Brock. See? They'd rather eat you than your crappy food. What does that tell you? Ash reads in Alicia's whooper guidebook that whooper will obey instructions more easily if you use a tambourine. Misty then points out that the tambourine is her favourite instrument and she used to play it every single day as a little girl. We even get a flashback of a young Misty playing the tambourine just so we can see the visual for ourselves. Mate, let's just call this what it really is. Most unnecessary backstory of the like, could this episode have continued the same way if Misty hadn't been a lifelong tambourine enthusiast? Absolutely, which is why this little flashback was completely pointless. Well, not completely pointless. After all, the point of it was to drag out the runtime in lieu of actual plot, so technically this is mission accomplished. As it turns out, Misty's actually crap at playing the tambourine. Although saying that, that's not strictly true. Like she seemed to keep a decent rhythm with it, but for some reason the whooper still seemed to hate it. I reckon it's more to do with the fact she was singing jangle, 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 jangle the whole time. Misty mate, it's a tambourine and we can hear it. You don't have to describe the sound to us. Somehow, Togepi plays the tambourine so well it's able to lead all the Whooper away like some kind of pint-sized Pied Piper. Poor Misty got shown up by a literal baby. Pass it on. After Togepi guides all the Whooper back to the pond, Ash and friends realise they're still missing one. And not just any Whooper. Alicia's favourite Whooper. Mate, how did you not even manage that? You were walking behind the Whooper the whole time. Do these guys just walk around with their eyes closed or something? Ah. Before you start, don't even say it. You're better than that. And speaking of things that are better than others, 30% off G Fuel is way better than 10%, isn't it? That's right, our G Fuel code, code ACE, is 30% off right now, so you can get yourself one of the wonderful flavors like raspberry iced tea that I'm drinking today. Oh, that's so bloody refreshing. Make sure you take advantage of this deal because it ends on Monday, 30% off with Code Ace. It helps out the channel massively, so thank you to everybody that uses it. Do remember though, G Fuel is for over 18s only because it contains caffeine and children don't need to be anywhere near caffeine. They're annoying enough as it is. And because it contains caffeine, drink it responsibly. Don't be a dickhead, dickhead. Apparently Skarmory's anime cry sounds like an elderly man slipping on a banana peel. <laughs> Direct quote from Misty. It doesn't help if you fall apart every time something happens. Misty, mate, leave the poor lad alone. Some of us can't help it. Misty has no sympathy for people with mental health struggles. Confirmed. After Ash and Misty find the whooper and it almost trashes the kitchen, it knocks a bunch of cutlery off the side towards Pikachu. Who narrowly escapes with his life, might I add. I'll be completely honest, when Ash and Misty went off to find a single missing whooper, I never once expected Pikachu to need to fear for his survival. Pokemon. Dial down the peril, lads. We're not even in the third act yet. Well, 
to me, Liam, are you not going to talk more about Wooper messing up the kitchen and being naughty? You mean, am I going to call a Wooper being a dickhead a WTF moment? Of course not. Have you seen Wooper? One look at that face should tell you they're knobheads by nature. The Wooper manages to hop effortlessly up the side of the nearby cliff. The one that, bear in mind, Ash and Misty are struggling to climb even though they have arms as well as legs. Say what you want about Wooper, but their climbing game is on point. Ash chases the Wooper onto a rickety rope bridge, and when he realises where he is, Misty points out, This bridge could collapse any second! So, in the interest of safety, what does Misty do? She joins him on the bridge. Yeah, great idea, add more weight to the bridge that could collapse any second. That's bound to help its structural integrity. Poor Pikachu is absolutely second guessing all of his life choices here. Although I'm pretty sure he's also on that bridge voluntarily, the numpty. Misty then tells Ash to be careful. That's big talk from a girl who moments ago proved she knows nothing about bridge safety. Wooper jumps around on the bridge until it's about to fall apart and then sprints off with a massive smile on its face. Like literally beaming from antenna to antenna. I take it back, Wooper's not a knobhead. It's a complete sociopath. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again. Situations like this would be a lot easier if you hadn't left Pidgeot and Charizard behind. Meanwhile, Meowth tells Jesse and James that he found a giant mushroom and James puts down the bowl of mushrooms he's holding and runs off the screen to the right. Literal frames before Wooper enters from the right and walks towards the bowl. Mate, how did James not see that Wooper? He practically would have had to step over the Wooper to get past it. I guess he could have somehow ran around it, but look how small that clearing is. It doesn't look like there's mushroom to maneuver. <laughs> Honestly, the whole Team Rocket thinks Wooper is a giant mushroom thing just annoys me. After Wooper turns its head around, James straight up tells Meowth it's only a Wooper. Now, are you really going to tell me that James recognizes Wooper from the front but not the back? The front and back of a Wooper look basically the same, except one side has the tail, something I'm pretty sure mushrooms don't tend to have, and the other side has the face and markings, something that mushrooms also don't have. I just refuse to believe that James, even for a second, would think that a whooper was a mushroom from the back. Pull the other one, lads. Direct quote from Meow. Guess that means we can't make a soup out of it. Sure you can. Just call it a super. Interesting note about Pikachu when he refuses to help convince Wooper to go with Team Rocket. When Jesse offers him a plate of acorns, he stands his ground. But when James and Meowth also throw in their acorns, the little fucker considers it. It's lucky Ash and Misty caught up with them just in time, because I reckon Pikachu was about to strike a deal, considering handing over an innocent trainer's Pokemon to a gang of thieves in exchange for a bunch of acorns. That's not very protagonisty. Everybody tries to grab the Wooper, but it's so slippery that nobody can get a hold on it. Wooper? More like Luber, am I right? Mate, Jesse sends out Arbok and it just full on decks it. It literally hits the ground like a sack of shit. You know in movies when someone goes to crowd surf and the crowd just parts and the person ends up eating the floor? That's basically what happened to Arbok here. Just go back and watch it. It's gnarly. Mate, if I was a woman on a moped, there is no chance in hell I'd let Brock hold on to me around my waist. We know all too well that this guy's thinking about creeping his hands around. Nah, mate, I'd be like, nope, you sit with your hands behind your back holding onto the back of the seat. Give a shit if you fall off, you ain't touching me. Brock says they should use their Pokemon to get Wooper back, and Orlisha says she has another way. She calls Wooper back in from playtime, so it jumps out of the balloon, and then when Arbok and Weezing go after it, she gets it to use Tackle on them. So your alternative to attacking Team Rocket is attacking Team Rocket. Technically, that's still is using your Pokemon to get Wooper back. It's just that in this case, your Pokemon also happens to be the same Wooper. Also, tackle attack on two opponents at once. Alicia is a hacker. Confirmed. That probably explains why the Wooper took no fall damage. And don't even try and tell me there's no fall damage in Pokemon because Legends Arceus says otherwise. Alicia's Wooper absolutely bodies Arbok and Weezing with barely any effort at all. So yeah, 100% that has to be a Hackmon. There is just no other way. Let's just appreciate that whilst dealing with Team Rocket, Ash, Misty, Brock and Alicia left Togepi completely unattended. And somehow responsible for all Alicia's Wooper. Which also means that after she got back from her mum's and picked up Brock, Alicia left left all of these babies unsupervised at the preschool. Whatever happened to, oh, I can't leave them on their own? So as it turns out, both Misty and Alicia are terrible at looking after young Pokemon. 
Pass it on. Direct quote from Ash. We're all glad to hear your mom's leg is out of the cast and she's up and around, Alicia. Wait, her mom's leg's all right now? Could she not have told Alicia that over the phone? The bloody cow had Alicia worried sick that she was struggling with a broken leg and apparently she's already up and about. Mate, if I was Alicia, I'd be pissed at my mum for that. Ash says looking after the whooper turned out to be kind of fun. Ash, mate, why are you lying? Like, they almost trashed Alicia's house while it was in your care. One of them almost made you fall to your death off a bridge and then you had to deal with Team Rocket. As far as I'm aware, none of that is remotely fun. In fact, it sounds incredibly stressful. You do realise it's okay to admit, oh, it's quite hard work actually. As Ash and friends head off, Alicia tells them they're welcome at the Whooper Pond preschool anytime. Oh, silly Alicia. We all know you're never seeing these three again. And we end the episode on a direct quote from the narrator. As they say goodbye to new friends, our heroes are headed once again for new adventures on their journey to Johto. Oh, for God's sake, he's done it again. Like I said in a previous episode, they're already in Johto. They're not journeying to Johto. They're journeying to Goldenrod City, the place where they hope to get the second Johto League badge. You know where they got their first badge? Violet City. And do you know where that is? That's right, Johto, where they already are. So those are my WTF moments of Pokemon Season 3, Episode 32. No big whoop. Let me know your favourites and any that I missed down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you to my Ace Trainer Ultra Excels, Andros LeFay and Bro Metapod. Don't forget to use code Ace Money off G Fuel and I'll see you in my live streams on this very channel. Until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.